Carl was talking about how much of a distraction home will be and like all the pressures of being in your hometown in front of all your fans, all the people asking for tickets. And like, uh, you know, a lot of fighters in boxing have lost in their hometown and they blame it on those distractions. So why won't that be you? Uh, I'm, I'm built different, man. Like, I don't, I don't have the same mentality as anyone in this game, which is why I've gone farther than everyone in this game after three fights. Uh, that type of stuff doesn't crack me. I'm, I'm, I've been through way harder scenarios, way harder life moments. I fought my first fight with no experience, no idea what I was getting myself into in front of 25,000 people in the Manchester arena, all of them rooting against me, flashing knives at me when I was walking into the stadium. Uh, I, I feed off of it, uh, and I overcame that adversity in my first fight, and there's there's nothing that will offset me or off-put me, and I, uh, I think the exact opposite will happen. I think maybe Tyrone Woodley is projecting his emotions, uh, like, like trying to say that it's going to crack me, but... I mean, you heard the fans out there, like, this is the dog pound. This, that was just a small taste of what what it's going to be like. When every single jab I'm landing, pop, 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 the crowd's going to erupt, and he's not going to be able to handle that pressure. This is the biggest fight he's ever been in, uh, the biggest payday of his life, and he has just as much pressure, if not more, than I do, because he's supposed to be the real fighter, the five-time UFC champion. So you talk about how you really drive off, like, that hate, like, kind of complain that building you're coming into an arena where perhaps for the first time you're really going to be in a race. Is that going to be any sort of adjustment for you like since you thrive so much in that environment where people are against you? Uh, I, I think I think it'll be dope. You know, like this is like one of my first fights uh, back from COVID. You know, a lot of my fights have been no audience at all. Uh, so I'm excited to, to see how it goes. But at the end of the day, when the fight and the bell rings, I, I turn into a robot and like I'm just performing a job and it's autopilot and I'm so focused in the ring and have so many thoughts and I'm calculating every moment that it, I don't really think about what else is going on outside the ring. Cool. That's it for me. Someone else wants to jump in. Jake, I got a question. <laughs> so training's been super rigorous, um, difficult. How have you implemented master locking into your training process? <laughs> Anything? Um, yeah, master locking is actually a key part part of my training regime because. Does BJ help you out? Sometimes. Okay. Uh, no. No. So, okay. Sometimes you know things get in the way. But master, <laughs> master, <laughs> master locking. Master locking helps me stay focused. Thanks, Jake. Big fan. Thank you, Connor. I mean, the random guy. <laughs> the random press guy. <laughs> Pretty confident out there, feeling good. Your right punch is looking uh, pretty strong. You're, you're not a boxer, but you sure look like one. Well, thank you, man. I uh, I haven't really even been able to show my boxing ability yet. Uh, the fights haven't gone long enough to really show my skill. And I, obviously, honestly, I uh, get better as the rounds go on in sparring. You know, I kind of start a little bit slow, so. You know, if Tyrone can make it out of rounds one, two, three, four, five, then you know. No one's made it out of round two. Yeah, exactly. You fought to get this fight in Cleveland. Why, man? The people here uh, are the best. Some of the best people in the world. Like my friends are here. Um, this city is one of the best cities in the world, and I just wanted to tell my parents, like, yo, we're bringing the fight home, and, and have that have that moment with them. Uh, when we came up with the idea for Cleveland, it just made sense on, on so many different levels. And there was like people saying no, people trying to stop it, people trying to say Columbus, people trying to say Texas. And I was like, guys, it has to be in Cleveland. Like, I don't want to fight if it's not in Cleveland. You, you talked about McGregor, you've talked about Dana White, now you're talking about Woodley. What are you going to do to him on August 29th? August 29th, uh, it, it'll be a boxing clinic. Um, people, people will see a, a grown ass man getting his ass beat uh, by the kid with blonde hair, and in in three rounds, uh, he he will he will be done. I'm gonna empty his gas tank. Uh, he's gonna be hit with a barrage of punches, not knowing what's coming. And when I when I put those 10 ounce Grant gloves on, I just turn into a different human being. 
uh, and, and I break people's skulls. If you beat him, where do you want him to put his tattoo? I, I did a Twitter poll, and <laughs> the, the most amount of votes was for his face. But, <laughs> like, I don't think he's going to end up doing that. I think he'll end up getting on the bottom of his foot. Cleveland loves you. Uh, can you tell us about some of your favorite spots here in Cleveland, Northeast Ohio? Um, I grew up, you know, in, in Westlake, uh, going, <laughs> going to Mitchell's Ice Cream on, on Sundays with the, with the fam. Um, th there's a little... Uh, ice cream shop that we would go to all summer called Dairy King. Uh, I ride my bike there as as a little kid. Um, I love the local like the local restaurants, the Applebee's, is, the, the TGI Fridays, all that stuff. So uh, that's what I really grew up on, and um, love going to Huntington Beach. Uh, would go there with with my with my dad and my brother and bring bring our dog there. Uh, we would go out on Lake Erie over to Putin Bay. Um, so those are some of like some of my favorite memories. You three know you get to four now. Who's next? <sighs> That's a good question. Look, I, I think it's something that my team and I will evaluate after I KO Tyrone because there's so much momentum and so much progress and so much more excitement with each one of my fights that anything is possible. You know, it, I could go straight to McGregor. I could go straight to Diaz. Uh, you know, I could I could fight. Canelo, I don't, I, like after my brother fought Floyd Mayweather, I think anything's possible.